things you didn't know about stock photography. As you know, I've been a stock photographer for many years, but there's a lot of questions that many of you had and I figured I'd make this video to help you answer and decide if this is for you. So let's get started with number one, the investment of stock photography. Stock photography is different than most uh, photography genres because you don't get paid up front. You do the work, you get paid later. And the biggest investment, the largest investment you're gonna find here is not your gear, it's your time. You're gonna be working 20, 30, 40 hours a week and you're not gonna see returns for a year or two down the road. And this is where a lot of people get discouraged because your pictures don't sell immediately. And yes, you do need good gear as well. This is your second investment. You, uh, you're competing with people that have beautiful brand new up-to-date cameras. So a smaller camera is gonna get you started, but you need good gear to compete with these professionals, stock professionals. There's a lot of people like me that have been shooting for 10, 15 years or more, and they have better gear than what I have. So yes, you do need good equipment. And then your third investment is your software. You do need to process your images. I shoot raw, you should be shooting in raw, and then you can process these images and get the best out of your shooting. When we're talking about software, I use Adobe Lightroom. There's other products out there on one software. I've used that in the past. It's very comparable to Lightroom. It's something to keep your stuff organized and export things with your keywords, your titles, descriptions. It just makes it a lot easier and it saves on your first investment that was your time. Stock photography is seasonal and you have to understand these seasons and also the trends. So when I talk about seasons, I mean, if I wanna sell pictures for Christmas, I need to upload those in July and August. By the time they get reviewed, they get processed and they get displayed, it's gonna be a few weeks. So now you're talking almost into September. If someone's gonna buy those prints to put them on an article, put them on a product, put them on something, this is gonna take a few weeks of processing and editing and reviewing. Uh, if you're doing something for Valentine's Day, you gotta get those up in December. If you're doing something for football season, you have to get those out a few months before. Summer, travel vacation pictures, you wanna get those in the winter so that by the time summer comes along, or to promote travel for winter travel. So th these are pictures, these are things that you gotta keep in mind. If I'm out uh, kayaking, those pictures are not gonna sell until the spring uh, or late winter, like uh, February, March. So these, this is why it's very seasonal. And then there's trends, what's happening in the news. These tend to sell right away, but they're short-lived. Uh, there's a lot of images like this that you'll put, if you see a trend, hurry up and get those pictures up. Uh, but long time uh, constant sales, holiday sales, seasonal sales, these you have to post the year before so you can start to see sales down the line. Uh, the next point in the next suggestion is yes, it does help if you upload consistently, just like YouTube, uh, the algorithms here. If I only upload one video every year, no one's gonna see it. And it's the same thing with stock. If you can upload weekly pictures, the algorithm is gonna favor you and constantly show your images in the new content, which is gonna bring more buyers to your page. It's the same thing with the YouTube algorithm. It's very similar. Yeah, I made a video about the process and how I do this. So uh, if you haven't seen that, I'll put a link right here. And this, is, this will help you process and have a batch of images. And then every week, just do small amounts, that's fine. Um, but this is very important is to upload consistently and constantly. So a lot of you have asked me about what agencies are the best and I started out with about nine different agencies and now I have it down to about four or five. Uh, the best one so far for me has been Shutterstock. I know they've done a lot of changes. Uh, they dropped sales prices, they've done everything, but I consistently sell images in Shutterstock. I am making a, a paycheck every month with Shutterstock. The second one, and it's a close second, is Adobe Stock. Adobe Stock has made some big changes and they're coming after Shutterstock. Their sales are usually around a dollar and I sell a lot more pictures than what I do with the other agencies. The other one I like to use is Alamy. I don't sell as much, but when I do, they sell for a lot more money. Uh, then there's also Dreamstime, Deposit Photos. These are other ones that I, I, I get a paycheck every month. It's not as much as with the other agencies, but everything helps. 
Some of you have asked me about wire stock and there's some benefits and some cons to wire stock. They do take a percentage, I think it's 15%. But that saves you a lot of time. The fact that you're not uploading to multiple sites and you can just do it all in one. They also can tag your images for you. They want to sell you pictures because then they get a small percentage of, from those images. So Wirestock to me is a go. The other good thing about Wirestock is that, let's take a quick look at Shutterstock. They have levels now. So if you're a level one earner, you're going to earn a lot less than a level six earner. And now this resets every year. If you're selling through Wirestock, they have one big bank of pictures, so they're gonna get to level six much faster than any individual could. So that means more revenue per sale. So to me, it's almost a no-brainer. When it comes to stock video, and I'll make a video explaining the process, how to edit, how to process, but I've been using Black, Black Box Global. Uh, this was awesome, so Adam, thank you very much for suggesting this. Uh, it's the same thing, you upload to one place and they distribute to all the other agencies. It saves a lot of time and it's a great way to get more return on your investment, which is time. Stock photography is a business, it is a job, it is, and it can be a full-time job if you want it to be a full-time income. If you just want to make a few dollars here and there, then I wouldn't worry about it, but if you're in it to win it, then you have to put the time into stock photography. I haven't, I'll be completely honest, over the last two, two and a half years, I haven't been active. The only images I've been uploading to my stock agencies are the ones that I show here on the videos. And that's because when I process the video, I have to process the images. So once they're done, I might as well just upload them. YouTube is taking a lot of time. For the last two and a half years, I've been trying to take YouTube up to another level and it is taking a lot more time and energy than what I expected. I'm gonna continue to make these videos and in the meantime, stock photography continues to support my channel and support me. So this is why I highly recommend it. It does continue to provide an income even when you're not active. The more active you are, just like YouTube, the more return you're gonna get. And so this is where you have to gauge how much your time is worth based on your returns. And now you do have to take good pictures, you have to be a good photographer. You have to know how to process your images also, which is also gonna elevate your skill level. And now you can do product photography, you could do portrait photography, landscape photography. So this is why I enjoy stock photography and because it's taught me so many things and you can grow in any direction you wanna grow. If you're interested in, in uh, wildlife photography, you can buy the equipment you need using stock photography. So this is why for me it's been very important. It's been the base of my photography career. Now I can do product shoots, I can do food photography, I can do landscapes and many things because of stock photography. So anyway, I'll leave you here with a couple of videos about product photography if you haven't seen it. I'm working on a couple more. Now I'm uh, trying to get some tabletop tents to compare and review. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye.